Hi, so my name is Carolyn, and I am from West Virginia. I miss Hannah at 8 o'clock this morning. This morning. Asked me to um, give a testimony of what the Lord has done um, since the ladies' discipleship home. So I want to give you a little bit of a timeline there. So I came to the student program in August of 2014. I graduated the student program in March of 2015. And then I stayed for the graduate program, which I graduated in April of 2016. And if you caught that, that's 11 months in the graduate program. So when Brother Burke said I had problems, he is not lying. I did. The graduate's program, was um, that was a rough period of time for me. But I'm so, so very thankful for it because going home, you, um, as a student, actually, is this for you, ladies, right here? As a student, sometimes, when you go through the program, you begin to overcome some things, and you're growing, and you have a wonderful foundation in the Lord, and things seem to be going smoothly for you, and relations back home are getting better. And you go home, but we don't realize, although the relationships got better, and there's real love there, and there's trust there. Some things are st home still hurting. They're still hurting. And you still, um, I don't want to say you have to prove yourself, but they need to see that what they've heard is real because they haven't witnessed it yet. They haven't seen you live your testimony yet. And sometimes that can get discouraging because me, for one, I don't always like to have to prove myself. I want to say, man, this has been two years. What God has done is great. The fact that I'm living a victorious life and I'm sober and I'm not using drugs, that should be enough. People should understand, but they don't. So you have to go home and you have to allow yourself to be transparent and you have to allow God to be seen in order for things to change. So when I went home, um, upon coming actually to the ladies' home, I had lost custody of my daughter. And it was actually to a point where I was only allowed to be holding her like I am right now if it was supervised. And it was only supervised under one person. So all of my contact with my child was at the discrepancy of one person. And you think after two years plus, really, of living a victorious life that things would be different going home, but they weren't. I had to earn that. I had to prove that I was capable of raising this child. And that can get discouraging. Um, so I went home, and um, I had to, I promised the Lord that I was not going to pursue that. I wasn't going to, um, to really fight for that in a public fashion until I could provide for my child, um, and until I had a real relationship with her. Because remember, I had been gone for almost two years. And Jacqueline was two when I left. One and a half, actually. Um, so when Jacqueline was hurt, when she had a boo-boo, when she fell down, she didn't run to me. She ran to my mom. When Jacqueline needed cleaned up before dinner, she didn't run to me. She asked my mom to wash her hands. That's discouraging. You have to fight for that. God gave me that. And he had to give it to me again. He had, had to prove that I was capable of that type of responsibility. That I would never throw it away again. So, um, when the Lord had provided me with my license back, which was thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, um, the Lord wiped the majority of all of that away. It was multiple court hearings and courts that had to be scheduled six weeks out and tickets that were lost and people that had to order computers. I'd wait for the computer to come in to find the tickets that were from 2007. So there was just a lot of things that went on with that. Um, the Lord provided there. And I was finally at a point where I had some money saved. I had transportation. I could go take my child to the emergency room if she needed it. That was important to me. Um, I could financially feed her when she was hungry. That was important to me. I couldn't stand in front of a judge and say, yes, I can take care of my child until I had those things. Overcoming the addiction was, I wasn't even thinking of that at that point. I, I needed to be a parent. I needed to be a, be a mom. So when I got to that point, that's when the real discouragement came. Because at this point now, 
um, it's 2017, I felt, man, the Lord has brought me a long way. And this judge still doesn't see it. He still wants to bring CPS in to look at my house. Allow him. When the judge says, man, we want to see your house, okay. When the judge says, we want to hear from people in your community what you're doing, okay. I'll get that for you. Allow yourself to be transparent and allow the Lord to be seen. Don't get discouraged by that. Don't get prideful about that. Let the Lord be seen. So I had to allow that. And I'm telling you, that is humbling. But um, there were two things that brought me through it the most. And Brother Biscotti's here right now. I see him in the back of the room. And it was from a chapel that he did one time. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to quote this perfectly. But he did a chapel. When I was in the graduate program, I had to go back to my student program for 30 days. Again, for those of you that haven't been through the home, that is humbling. That is rough. And Brother Biscotti gave this chapel when he used the illustration of being in an airport. And he said that the Lord's timing isn't like our timing. He said, but sometimes. He said, have you ever seen that fast trip in the airport where you can get on and you just go? He said, sometimes the Lord will put you on it. He said, and then the most amazing thing is when you're still walking. Don't just stand still on that fast trip. Keep walking. And you'll get there that much faster. And I thought about that when I was home a lot. And then the Lord brought me, when it came time, when I was fighting for my daughter, he brought me to Deuteronomy. And there's a verse in Deuteronomy 7.22, which the book of Deuteronomy for that entire year, that this was all going on back home, truly just ministered to my soul. And verse 22 says, And the Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee by little and little. Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. I say, you can't do this all at once. I want to take you through this step by step. Be patient. And every time I got discouraged, I kept a mental reminder. I put little pebbles down in my mind. Okay, the Lord was here. He brought me here. I was on the right path, right here. And any time I'd get discouraged, I'd look back at the last time that I saw God was right here. And I just kept moving. I kept putting down pebbles and I just kept moving. And I stand here today with a job that the Lord provided me where I can talk about the Lord all day long. It's a very secular job, it's wonderful. I get to travel all throughout my beautiful state of West Virginia. I love it. Um, I have a vehicle that I can drive when my child is sick and I'm holding her right now, ultimately accountable to God. And that's that. I'm a real mom. I'm a real parent. When my child is sick, guess who she runs to? When my child needs a bath at night, guess who she goes to? When Jacqueline gets <laughs> when Jacqueline gets sick at school, they call me. And I just I'm so thankful for what the Lord has done. I can't imagine anyone going through anything like that without God. Because he is just the rock. So that's, that's about that. So thank you very much. I love you, girl.